everyone, I'm Morgan. I'm the assistant director here at the Butterfly Biosphere at Thanksgiving Point. Um, behind me, we have Jeremy, who's one of our keepers. He's gonna be doing some work in the background. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the research that we're doing here at Thanksgiving Point. It is a really unique opportunity to be able to study animals in a controlled environment that helps us to really learn a lot about their natural history as well as what factors really uh, influence their behavior. Um, a lot of animals out in the wild, we don't have a good understanding of their life history. Maybe a beetle lives half of its life underground and so we don't really know what goes into um, building it, its, its life up and, and how it lives and what it eats and things like that. As we take care of them um, in a zoo or an aquarium, we're able to really understand what they need and, and, and what they need from us and how we can better protect their habitats. Um, a lot of zoos and aquariums are crucial as far as captive breeding um, and understanding their health uh, and animal welfare all over. Another thing that zoos do that is super important is it helps the public to be involved in their conservation. Um, there is a special ability to see an animal in, in person and start to feel a, a sort of stewardship for that. It, it gets put on your radar, something you might not see in, in another situation. Um, and it, it starts to become more important to you because you know about it. You can start to learn through conservation messaging how we can better take care of, of our outdoors, of their natural habitats and things like that. Especially when it comes to bugs, bugs are largely understudied. Um, it means that there's, there's really a lot about our, our bug neighbors that we don't know very much about. So that is why we do research. We try to understand and, and gain the scientific knowledge about these creatures. So these beetles, the blue death vayner beetles, these uh, will play dead when disturbed. These guys are from the Sonoran Desert uh, in Arizona. They've got this really beautiful uh, waxy coat blue color on them. Um, and they're really popular in zoos and aquariums uh, because they're easy to handle, they're fun to look at, um, and of course, them playing dead is also really fun. Um, however, there is like nothing known about their breeding habits or anything like that, and so all the specimens are actually collected from the wild. Because of that, um, the beetles are over harvested a little bit, um, and we want to make sure that we're not um, depleting the population in their natural habitat. And so I, here at Thanksgiving Point, I'm just looking at how to breed them in a way that is sustainable. So the experiment consists of three different things. Um, first, the eggs um, that the beetles lay. Uh, we've got two different ways of incubating the eggs. Um, first, we have to gather the eggs and then we incubate them for a period of three weeks. The next step is the raising of the larva and getting them to pupate. So we've got three different uh, substrates uh, that we test that is based off of their natural habitats, different substrates that you would find in the Sonoran Desert. Um, then we also have three different diets uh, to test, whether they like produce or whether they like protein. Uh, and so that gets us a feel for what they eat in the wild. Um, and what gets them to grow the most. The other thing that we do to determine if they're doing well is by measuring their length, which is actually really hard to do because they like to wiggle around and stuff, and so it's hard to get the exact length. Basically, the idea with that is, is that a larger grub is a healthier grub. And so by looking at all these different variables and the ones that do the best or grow the most are the ones that are healthy and going to pupate or turn into beetles. Okay, so these are some blue death painter uh, beetle grubs. Um, they look pretty small now, but they actually, when they first hatch, are a lot smaller. Um, what we're going to do is measure um, from the very front, uh, from their head to the tail. And so, and again, this is kind of hard to do because they can kind of scrunch up and they can kind of walk around. We want to get as close to their actual length as possible. We get the correct measurement. We then put that into a computer and a spreadsheet where we can compare and contrast all the different experiments with that. So several different zoos uh, also are trying to breed blue death beetles um, and we're just trying to contribute to the general knowledge 
by doing these specific exper experiments. We also want to get it out in scientific literature as there's not very much known. And so this can contribute to that conversation so that now scientists can actually go out in the wild and maybe find the right kind of habitats where they these beetles would be breeding. So when animal keepers at zoos or aquariums are working with larger vertebrates, there's a lot of vocalizations and body language that combine to give us a good idea of how they're feeling. If they're feeling scared or angry or hungry or tired, um, those things are a little bit more evident and we're able to interpret those a little bit better. However, bugs don't really have that same combination of body language and vocalization, so it's really hard to tell looking at a, at a bug if it's happy or sad or scared or hungry or angry or tired. It's just not quite as clear, and so we have to look a little bit deeper so that we can interpret how they're feeling and if they're feeling happy and safe in our environment. All right, so here are our two desert millipede groups. Everything about these two groups is exactly the same. They have the same number of individuals, they have about the same weight um, of the, the individuals in there. They get the exact same amount of food, the same type of food, the same amount of water. The environments, as you can tell, are, are exactly the same. The only variable between the two is that one of these groups um, will be handled by our staff and our guests. We think that it's super important for guests to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction um, with a bug to be able to, to really get to know them. And so one of our groups will go up to our Hold a Critter show and be handled by guests, while one group will stay down here in the lab and not be handled at all, except for once a month to be weighed. So this is not going to be you know, a two week research project. This is going to be a very long term, um, larger scale project after several years that's going to determine the difference in their overall health. Some of the results that we'll be looking for down the road are if one group grows significantly more slowly than the other. That might suggest that the handling does have a stressful impact on them or maybe they grow the same but the group that is handled doesn't pr produce as many viable offspring in the long run. That would be a another indicator to us that maybe um, handling is a cause of stress for them. If both of these groups seem to be exactly the same in a couple years, they have still similar weights, um, similar size growth and, and growth patterns, as well as a similar reproductive um, success, then that would be an indicator that maybe they get used to being handled and it's not a stressful event for them. And so that's something that we are excited to, to know and be able to share with others and other facilities that also utilize other insects for handling and interactive experiences. Thanks so much for watching to learn about the research that we're doing here at Thanksgiving Point. Remember that every time that you visit some of these zoos and aquariums, insectariums, you are supporting that research and you are allowing that scientific knowledge to move forward so we can become better stewards of our habitats and our surroundings as well. If you liked this video, give it a like, hit subscribe and share it with your friends and check back with us periodically and, and hopefully we'll have some exciting news about our blue death painters and uh, some scientific discovery as far as millipede handling.